Good morning, ladies and gents. Welcome to the brewery. Yes, welcome along, folks. We're in the brewery and I've got the camera out. So I had a little bit of a break, small holiday with the family, and we spent a little bit of time as well doing like the boring things like tax returns and stuff like that. That's all just been done uh, before we went away. Um, so I didn't pick the camera up for some time, but here we are today, back in it and back on it. So what we're gonna do is, well, it's often the same when I come into the brewery after a bit of time away, we're gonna have to do some tidying, some clearing up, putting things away, and then we'll see what projects are on the horizon. So one of the first things that I shall do is a quick stock take, make sure that whilst I've not been here, um, anything that's gone out of the brewery has indeed been uh, correctly checked out. Keep our friends at Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs happy. And we'll get all of these beers then, which uh, a lot of these kegs have been conditioning. We'll get them all into the cold rooms and tucked away safely. And then over here, these are some more kegs that are charging up at the moment. These are kegs that are waiting to be charged. Now, the week before I went away, or a couple of weeks before I went away, I made a couple of new beers. So we've got a Idaho 7 single hop and a Sabro single hop. And we've got these in cask and keg obviously available at the brew shed if you're passing also made a batch of the coconut shy and i think we did a vacant gesture i'm not sure but by all accounts the two new beers have gone down wonderfully well in the pub so what i'm planning on doing is putting the recipes on the website for you guys to have a play with if you want to have a look at them they'll be up within the next few days i hope and uh yeah, hopefully we'll we'll get some uh, beers made in the next few weeks now that we seem to have had a break in this extremely hot weather. So in here, everything has been whirring away. All the cold rooms have been on full tilt, all the coolers. I tried to make sure, obviously, that all the beers were packaged so we could turn the fermenters off while I was away just because I didn't want, obviously, well, th using the electricity for one. There's something I want to share with you about that in a moment. Um, but yeah, while we're addressing the temperature, it's 10.36 in the morning and we are still at 20 degrees in here, even though it's been raining on and off all night. And if I just go outside and I show you, well, the prevailing weather conditions, you'll see that indeed, it's not, um, it's not dry completely. Oh, we've got Dongas delivery coming in. Well, there he goes. So, the Dongas delivery coincided with a Booker's delivery as well. So I'm gonna have to unload this and take it all in. Looks like he's coming back. Sounds like he's coming back with another basket. I didn't think we had two. We'll see, we'll see. So yeah, Dongas, our CO2, or seller gas supplier do a milk run as it's called every fortnight and if we're desperate we give him a call and he's just delivered just the one today because we've got three spares this one's on that one's for the post mix so not a big money order for him today but we like to make sure we've got plenty of gas there's nothing worse Right, I'll turn the light on in the dry store. We've got a lot of cardboard to get rid of. We've got some... That's going back, that must be... Something wrong with that. That's not a full keg. And it looks a state. So that must be going back to standstill for some reason. I'll ask Stu. We've also got some interesting beers going on. Um, Millionaire, Milk Stout by Wild Beer. What we've got down here, the Colonel IPA Mosaic at 7.2. That's going to give our Amarillo a run for its money. And 
wild IPA and uh, yeah ooh, that's wild beer as well what we got 5.2 percent sounds interesting that's Carlin boring don't want to know about that Shall we have a look what else we've got on then? Seeing as we're doing a bit of a cellar tour, here's one boys. Dea. What's this one called? Steady Rolling Man. And 5.2% uh, on the ABV there. And let's have a walk around here. So Buxton Brewery, Troll Tunga. There's the uh, pump clip for you pump clip fanatics. It's a bit dark in this corner of the pub, of the cellar. What's this then? Odyssey, Pale Horse, IPA, 6%. We've also got another one down here. Club Tropicana by Tiny Rebel at 5.5. That's another beautiful beer. Sorry for the noise of the fan. How's about that then? And then what we got on? We've got our Idaho 7 single hop from uh, from us. Then the Sabro single hop ready to go on keg as well. But proof of concept, vacant gesture on keg. We've got Talisman Nipa there. Um, the Amarillo IPA. Here is another one. Verdant. Uh, what's that? Headband. Uh, Asvex Brewing Company, a new one to me. This one's called Cruise Liner. Um, not sure what style of beer that is. Here we have another Tiny Rebel. And this is Tropical Deluxe by... Who was that by? Howling Hops, by the looks of things. So we've got quite an interesting selection on at the brew shed at the moment. Uh, all coming through, so if you're passing, get yourself in for a bevy, boys. Right, looks like that's it with the groceries delivery, if you like. So we've just got to empty this one cage of stock. Plenty of gin. So, uh, I don't know if I've told you this, um, but we've got a new chef starting this week because Tom's migrating to Australia, believe it or not. So, um, while we've got a new chef coming on board, we're going to make a few changes and one of those things is uh, we're probably going to get this cleaned. So, we never had it cleaned properly. Um, I did give it a bit of a clean when I installed the new fan, but we could probably do with it being serviced by a professional. What I'm going to do though today, because we're starting to see a little bit of grease coming out at the bottom of the trap, there it is, we're going to drop that inspection chamber at the bottom there and have a look inside. Yeah, I've had the front at uh, the bottom off, that needs a professional clean, there's nothing I can do about that. So we're going to have to get the pros in, uh, but I've been up there, that gutter leaks and um, I've just cleaned it out, here's all the junk. And um, when it leaks, it does all this damage, you see, to these hanging baskets. So, have you rubbed some in, Gem? Yeah. Oil. Well, I just uh, use a... It's all right, don't, don't... Don't ruin any cloths. I've got something for that. Anyway, as I was saying, I'm going to go up there and adjust that gutter in because the uh, where the roof runs off, Let's say this edge of the table is a gutter in, the roof's there, it's not in the gutter in. So I'm going to go up and uh, just hammer them pegs in a little bit more, bring the, bring the gutter in a bit closer to the wall, if you know what I mean. Well, we still have one little problem there. Can't get to it though, really. So um, probably when we get this cleaned, if they come with a tower scaffold, I'll ask them if I can shoot up there and put a bit of slate in. That's all that's missing, or a bit of dab proof membrane under the slates into the gutter. Um, they're talking of gutters, Gemma's in one now, and uh, all the shit that we washed out, uh, we've just washed down the drain and then we're picking up all, all the bits of, uh, bits of slate and whatever else that's come off the roof. 
but another job sorted now I've just got to do a little running repair on this piece of fencing here somebody seems to have kicked it off it's only stapled on anyway by the looks of it not very uh, not very good so I'll go and get my staple gun and do the same so I've got this little portable compressor I'll use this row of staples up. It looks like it's moved. I think there's nothing there. <laughs> right, next job. So I came to put a drip rail on the bottom of this door. We need a new door, it's shagged, but you know, what do you do? And it was completely rotten underneath. So what I've done is I've chopped the rotten bit out, and replaced and gorilla glued it in with like a big solid base frame, cut it to size, screwed it in both ends, glued her on and then put the drip rail on to disguise the joint at the front so I reckon that's ready for priming get some paint on it, nobody will be none the wiser and it'll probably last for another five years now winner goodness me would you look at the garden folks that's it we've done for the day I've decided to come home and get some tea on and I'm probably going to empty one of these buckets so these are full of Pink fir apple potatoes. Do you like my little design? I've got artistic. And uh, well, the tops have about died. So I'm thinking about tipping one out and maybe having a look what we can harvest from within. Maybe this one. 
well I've dug the box out I just have to throw that back up on here and we'll probably reuse all that uh, next year and just plant some more spuds in here it's worked really quite well we've got some rosemary the herbs didn't do too well because they were shaded by the potatoes I didn't expect them to run away quite as much as they have done but let's have a look at uh, what today's harvest has brought us so here we are this is what we've got from one container of potatoes I really do like these knobbly looking pink fir apples and they taste divine they've got a little nutty character to them and just boiled and rolled in butter oh, what a winner and that in combination with some runner beans will be fantastic also got a nice big beet out of the patch there at the back of the barbecue and uh, 12 eggs from the chucks and a little bit of Japanese bunching onions you use this just like you would spring onions so that's it folks thank you very much for watching uh, make sure you keep liking keep subscribing and there's more videos coming soon cheers <laughs>